So, uh, first off, can you spell out your name and then also tell me your title? Okay. Uh, my name is Lamar, L-A-M-A-R, Owen, O-W-E-N. My title is Chief Technology Officer, or CTO, at the Pisgah Astronomical Research Institute. Perfect. And can you tell me a little bit about what your organization does? So Perry, uh, as an organization, does education in astronomy, radio astronomy, and other science, technology, and engineering and math fields. Uh, we've been uh, open as an educational institution for over 25 years now, and uh, over 100,000 students have been affected, uh, positively affected by our uh, educational programs. I probably need to say that over again. Um, let me think about this for a second, because I, it, it's hard to get what Perry does in a soundbite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Perry exists to open minds of all ages, we say K to gray, uh, to the opportunities of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, as it applies first to astronomy, also to radio astronomy and other technical fields. Amazing. Maybe that's a little bit better sound body. Yeah, that sounded great. And so, of course, we're here today to talk about the satellite. So can you tell me a little bit about what exactly Cosmos 482 is? So back in 1972, uh, Russia was launching missions to other planets while the United States was launching missions to the moon. Russia was going to other planets. Russia is still the only nation that has landed uh, a probe on the surface of Venus and sent back audio. You can actually listen to the winds of Venus. There's a YouTube clip on, on that. Uh, Russia launched uh, several missions to Venus in 1972, one of which uh, failed to actually eject out of Earth orbit. Uh, the rocket that was supposed to propel uh, this particular Venus probe out of Earth orbit did not do so, and it left the probe in pieces in low Earth orbit. Is that sufficient? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so why hasn't the satellite been destroyed earlier? So wait, uh, satellites in low second, Earth I'm orbit. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, we have a tour that's coming in, so I'm going to move really quickly. That's fine. I understand tours. We have tours of our facility all the time, uh, self-guided as well as uh, guided tours and field trips and all kinds of things. All right. Awesome. I am back. Okay. So, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Why hasn't the satellite been destroyed earlier? So, while there are tens of thousands of satellites in orbit around the Earth, uh, the area of the Earth's orbit of, or, let me start that over. Space is really, really large. And even though there are tens of thousands of satellites in low Earth orbit, the amount of room they have to fly through is, is really massive. Imagine, you know, like airplanes uh, flying over the Earth. You could have 10,000 airplanes flying at once, which... I don't know how many there are right now, but there's likely tens of thousands. And even as large as an airplane is, and airplanes are much larger than satellites, uh, there's a lot of space between them. And so um, once you put an object into orbit, it stays into that orbit until something, in this case, the atmosphere, slows it down and brings it out of orbit. Awesome. And do you know when and where the satellite will land? So the current projections over when Cosmos 482 uh, is going to re-enter is uh, a window of about eight hours. Uh, as the time gets closer, the prediction gets more and more accurate. And currently it is 1.54 a.m. Eastern time is the center of an eight-hour window. And so this satellite will come down along its orbit uh, sometime within four hours plus or minus of 154 um the morning of may the 10th so that's saturday morning uh it can only come down along its orbit 
And right now there's only five orbits in the window. Uh, the U.S. is on the extreme end of that window uh, towards uh, 6.54 in the morning, uh, thereabouts. And uh, the west coast of Africa is on the early end of that window. And so anywhere around the Earth, along those orbits in that window is, is a potential for the satellite to come down. Right now, the center of the window has the satellite coming down in the middle of the North Atlantic. So will people here in North America be able to see the satellite? If the, let me, let me see this. Or will there be a possible chance? If this satellite stays up a little longer than expected, there's a good chance that uh, people in North America would be able to see this satellite come down. Uh, it's going to be a pretty narrow cone, kind of like a meteor. Uh, it's going to look like a really, really spectacular meteor coming down. Uh, but it'll be toward the end of the window. So in the wee hours of the morning between 2 and uh, 7 a.m. thereabouts would be the most likely time. Uh, the chances aren't great. Uh, as I say, the center of the window is with the satellite coming down over the Atlantic. So the likelihood is not great, but uh, it's definitely a possibility. Awesome. And another question, do satellites like this fall often? There are objects falling out of orbit all hours of the day, pretty much every day. Uh, over the years, there have been over 100 million objects put into orbit, uh, whether it be nuts and bolts from a mission or whether it be panels or whether it be pieces of dust, and they're continuously coming down. Uh, the um, I don't have an exact number, but uh, there's meteorites coming down all the time. And some of those are spacecraft. Some of those are meteorites. If you don't see NASA talking about it, it was probably a spacecraft. Uh, if NASA's talking about it uh, specifically out of Huntsville, Alabama, there's uh, the Meteoroid Environment Office uh, and the Fireballs Network. They track those things. They track meteorites, but they do not track uh, spacecraft. And there's multiple uh, skyfalls every single night. I hope that's not too wordy. That was great. <laughs> and uh, another question. Oh, yeah, I got another meteorologist here. This you is Megan. Okay, she's hey, Megan. <laughs> um, okay, so far, though. It is so cool. Uh, another question for you. So I read that y'all used to track Russian satellites during the Cold War. What's the history behind that? So um, Perry was originally a NASA satellite tracking station back in beginning in the early 1960s. And from the 60s through the very early 1980s, NASA operated uh, the dishes at Perry to track U.S. satellites. Uh, the rumor is, and uh, it's partially declassified, that a, a an agency out of the Department of Defense did indeed do signals intelligence activities from about 1981 through 1995. Exactly what they tracked, when they tracked it, I don't know. That's mostly classified, but it has been declassified that uh, an agency of the Department of Defense did do signals intelligence uh, at this facility during those times. We've got a book. Really? Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> You're muted. There we go. Wait. <laughs> um, what's the book, actually? Um, the book is, and I, I'm going to have to pull this up. Um, and it's written by a local author. But there, it, it's available on our website as well as on Amazon. But let me get, let me pull up the Amazon link so I can give you the exact title. Because I, I, as the as the old joke goes, I'm a little dyslexic, <laughs> and so I get things backwards a little bit. All good. So I want to give you the right name. All right. The book's title is 
Pisgah Astronomical Research Institute, An Untold History of Spacemen and Spies. And it's written by local author Craig Growley. Cool title. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's so cool. And then another question for you. Do you still track satellites with your organization? So Perry being an educational nonprofit, we are looking for revenue sources from all uh, avenues. One of those avenues is we have done and do um, spacecraft tracking for commercial uh, entities. Yes. Okay, awesome. And uh, just more questions on the satellite that's coming down tonight. Uh, should should we be concerned at all? Is it going to be a risk or is it not much of a risk for us here? So this satellite's going to have to come down in one of its orbits. And the five orbits in the current eight-hour window, uh, none of those come directly over Western North Carolina. The nearest one, which is the very last orbit of the window, uh, does intersect central Tennessee, uh, goes over Nashville, goes up through eastern Kentucky, and then over West Virginia. But that's at the very end of the window, like I say, probably around 630 uh, in the morning uh, is that section of the orbit. Uh, the likelihood of it coming down in the area is very, very slim. Okay, awesome. Good to know. But will people be able to see it? Will they not? The likelihood is not really good for folks in this area to see it unless it's very, very late. And so that would be, you know, like I say about, I, I shouldn't say like I say. Let me start that over. So, uh, for folks in the local area to be able to see this, the satellite would have to come down in the wee hours of the morning right before dawn uh, in the 6 to 6.30 uh, a.m. time frame. And so the likelihood is not great. Awesome, awesome. And then one last question. What is the importance of this satellite, um, especially because it's been up in the atmosphere for so long? Let's see, how do I do this in short words? Because I, I am a history buff when it comes to these sorts of things. I love to, to look at the history of this. Absolutely. The Russian interplanetary probes are all historic objects, uh, giving us data from our nearest planetary neighbor, Venus, that nothing else has ever done. And it's a little sad to see such a historic spacecraft uh, come back down, but... Uh, we welcome it back down to terra firma. Thank you. And is there anything I may be missing or anything important that you think our viewers should know? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, let me. So there might be a concern of uh, what would be the likelihood of being hit by a fragment of this satellite or, or satellite or meteorite for that matter. And you are hundreds of times more likely to be struck by lightning than you are to be hit by a meteorite or a piece of space debris uh, coming out of orbit. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lamar. That, those were some great answers.